Hey guys, uh, welcome to my channel Data Driven Decision. In this channel, I talk about the data science and related technology kind of stuff. If you're down for that, please subscribe to my channel. So today's video is all about the top level unpacking in the dictionary unpacking. In the last video, we have talked about how to iterate using the for loop in both the languages in Python and Julia. And today's video is just the uh, next step of that particular video. So if you'd like to check that video, you can see it in the card above. So let's further do, let's get started of this video. So I am just, uh, first I remove, okay, first I go to that uh, notebook, which I have written. So if I remove over here, the text, okay. So you can see that there are two notebooks. One is the Python notebook, this one, and another one is the Julia notebook. So in the Python notebook, you will see the examples using the Python language. <clears throat> and in the Julia notebook, you will see the examples using the Julia language. So, basically the unpacking is a really interesting topic and it can help you in your coding career pretty immensely basically. So, you can see that in Python and Julia, both have the dictionary and the tuples, data type. So, so in that Python, the first cell which I have written is a tuple basically. I am defining a tuple. So you can see that T is a basically a tuple which contains one, two, three, four, five. So these are the elements in the tuple. So in the tuple, how to define that? You just need to use the first packet and that will be the tuple. And if you just use the basically the third packet, then it will become the list. So for list, how to do that? I'm just showing you. So if you just do like this, one, two, three, four, five. So that will be array or diction or list in Python. And Julia also similar <clears throat> and in tuple you can just use the first bracket that's the difference only and the difference there are a lot of difference which I have shown you earlier in my earlier videos you can just check that out so here I'll just iterate basically using the i in the for loop so if I just run this you can see that like the one two three four five these are coming iteratively in this particular for loop and then i use the unpacking feature basically so in this particular tuple you can see that the elements are in singular format like one two three four five so they are the individual element in that particular tuple but if i use a pair of elements like over here you can see that like one two this appeared in the first bracket three four it's another pair 5, 6 is another pair and 7 and 8 is another pair. Okay. So if I define that particular uh, pair using u, u is basically a tuple over here. And then if I just iterate through that, so for i in u, okay. so i basically the elements. Okay. Earlier i was elements and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But over here, i is basically the this particular pairs like 1, 2, then 3, 4 then 5, 6, then 7, 8. And so in this particular way, it is iterating through the uh, tuple pairs basically. So if I just run this particular cell, you will see the output. So you can see that like for i in u, print i. So i is over here basically 1, 2, then 3, 4, then 5, 6, then 7, 8. So it's just picking up the particular elements, the particular pairs. Okay, in this way it is just doing that. Okay, now it's an interesting thing. After you will find that it is giving the pairs, you can clearly unpack those things. So unpack this particular pair basically. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You can unpack. So how do you do that? So it's a very simple. So the same for loop you just write for i in u, print i. Okay, so here what you will do is that for a and b in u, so over here, you have to use the a and b. You have to give the format in the same way, like one, two, three, four in the pair format. You can just give it like this, like a and b in u, print b. So over here, b is basically this, a, b, so two. In particular over here, b is basically four, over here six, over here eight, so in this way. So if I run this, it should give you the print of those elements, like two, four, six, eight. So if I just run this cell, you'll see that like it is giving you the two, four, six, and eight. 
So in this way, it is unpacking that particular tuple and giving the desired output. So I can also show you the how to get the AS basically. So one, three, five, seven. For that, what you'll do, you just simply remove V and give A. And if you just run this, you'll see that it will give you that particular value, one, three, five, and seven. So in this way, you can just unpack a particular tuple. Okay. So as you see that how you're going to do the unpacking in tuple, the same thing you can also do in the dictionary also. So in the dictionary in Python is basically unordered list basically. So it's unordered data type. So you can see that D I have given as a dictionary in the second bracket, I have given as K1, 1, K2 is 3, K3 is 10, K4 is 4. So K1, K2, K3, K4, these are basically the keys of the dictionary. And the elements, the values are basically 1, 3, 10, and 4. So these are the different values in this dictionary. So if you just run like this, so D equal to this particular key value pair, key value pair, key value pair, key value pair. And if you run this cell, I'm just iterate through dictionary, it will only able to give you the keys. So you can see the K1, K2, K3, K4, they are the keys. Okay. But there's an interesting thing you can do. You can convert that particular dictionary to a tuple. So if you just use this function dot items, in Python, d dot items. D is the dictionary. Items is basically the function. So if you just run this cell, you can see that it converts a particular dictionary to a tuple, like format, like pair k1, k1. So this is the one pair. K2, three is another pair. K3 and ten, it's another pair. K4 and four, it's another pair. So these are the four pairs it has been created. So now I have the particular format like basically i want the format in that peer format in tuple i have it now so i can easily iterate through that so you can see this for a b in d dot items so so d dot items is this so it's a tuple now it's a i'm going to unpack that so k1 k2 k3 in this way so if i just run this you'll see that unpack value so it is giving p a and b k1 k2 k3 k4 1 3 10 4 so it is giving like this. So I can also show you like if I just remove B, suppose I want to see only the keys. So you can see the keys. If you want to see the values only, so B over here, B I'm giving. If I just run this cell, you'll see the particular values I'm going to get. So in this way, you can just also like iterate or unpack dictionaries in Python. So I just uh, make the same. Okay. Okay, so now you have a good understanding of the tuples and dictionary, how to unpack that in Python. So I'm going to show the same thing in Julia. It will be a little different, but the concept will be same. So in this way, you will be able to understand both the languages at the same time. So over in Julia, if you go, you can see that I have also written that similar kind of code, but the format is a little different over here. So I've given the tuple t equal to this, one, two, three, four, five. And for i and t, I'm giving the print line, okay, print line i and you have to give in end in Julia language to, uh, to end any kind of loop or any kind of operation basically. So if I just run this cell, you can see that it is going to give you the particular thing like one, two, three, four, five. So these are the different elements it is showing you. So in the same thing I'm going to do over here also in the same tuple format one two three four in Julia it is almost similar. So if I just run this cell here, you can see that it is also giving you those particular items in the peer format like one two, then three four, then five six, then seven eight. In this format it is also giving you that particular peer items. Okay, so you have it now. So now what you'll do? You're going to unpack that. Okay, so if I just use a similar format in Python, A, B, in U, print line. So U is basically over here is the particular like tuple in the pair format, which is required here. So if I just run this cell, you can see that 
invalid iteration specification. So it is not possible in Julia to iterate in this way. The way you have done it in Python, it is not possible in Julia. So you can think something different way, but over here you can see that I am written that thing in a different like in a different way so that you will have the similar kind of unpacking feature in Julia also. So in if you can search for the internet, but I don't think you will get a lot of information on that. But over here, I have searched for it and I have come up with this solution which will give you the similar sort of fun packing feature like the Python. So, what I have done over here is that you can see that you have defined in this way. So, it's a Julia like uh, tuple in the pair format. So, now what I will do for i in you print line. I if I do this, so you can oh, you have already seen that like for I in you print line I so it will just print out those pairs like one two three four five six seven eight. So if I want the earlier elements one three five seven and two four six eight, how I'll get that? I can just use the index. So <clears throat> basically, if I just use the index of one in Julia, index start from the one instead of zero. So the one index will give you the one, three, five, and seven. So if I just run this cell, you can see that it will give you the similar output like one, three, five, seven. It unpack that particular tuple and it will give you that uh, desired output. <clears throat> and now if I just run this with the two over here, I've given the index at two. So in that case, I, what I'll get, I'll get the two, four, six, and eight. So if I just run this cell, <clears throat> You can see that I'm going to get the two, four, six, eight. The similar thing like a Python. In Python, I have done here is that A and B in you. You can see in the Python notebook what how I, I used to write. I used to write like this like A and B and you print A. In this way, we are going to unpack it. But over here, what we do is that we just iterate to I. So for I and you, we are going to use the index to give you the desired output. So if you give the two, you'll get the second items. If you give the one, you'll get the first items. Okay. So now, like using the similar format, you also able to do that dictionary unpacking. So in Julia, how do you define the dictionary? So you can see that D is given as dictionary K11, K23, K45. So K1, K2, K3 are the keys, and the 1, 3, 4 are the values. Okay, and the def definition of defining is little different in Julia. So in Python, it was in the like the second bracket I've given in this way, but in Julia, it has been given in this way, like k1 equals to the like, greater than one. So in this way, you have to define it. So now, if I just run this cell, you'll see that. But it will show you. So it will show you in that similar format, like in. You can see that like K44, K11, K22. So here it is like printing out individually those pairs K11, K23, K44. So this is the key value pairs which is it is appearing, it is presenting. So how do you do that? Like you can easily iterate through that to get the unpack feature of that. So which I have given in this cell. So okay, if I just run this cell over here, so if I copy this cell. I just run it. Okay, so okay, if I use normal D only. Okay, and if I just run this cell, you will see that particular unpack feature. So K4, K1, K2. I'm using the index as one, so I'm getting those features keys. And if I want to get the values, then what I'll do, I'll just use a two index of two. So in this way, you can just unpack it. Okay, in this way you are able to get the values out of the dictionary using the key value feature in, in Julia language. So this is the another thing and you can use the collect function, collect function is also there which basically convert a dictionary into a peer kind of thing. So if you just run this cell you will see that <clears throat> it will give you the similar sort of output like but if you just directly apply the collect function it will give you the peer output pair string and integer so string and integer it is able to give that and also use the that similar for loop on the collect the you'll get the similar sort of output so if i run this cell also 
uh, you'll get the same thing. So keys I am getting. And if I just use the index as true, so we'll get the similar sort of output. The values you shall get over here. So I hope you like the video. If you like it, please subscribe to my channel and see the awesome videos which I make on data science and related technology kind of stuff. So I'll see you soon with a new video. Thank you for watching my video. Thanks.